As crops grow taller and the season matures, it's not uncommon to see a low-flying airplane dive and rise over fields in Nebraska. Those aerial applicators apply products to help protect and manage plants, doing it faster and on a larger scale than a ground-based sprayer could. To make sure those planes are achieving efficiency and uniformity, Operation SAFE helps test planes across the U.S. SAFE stands for Self-Regulating Application and Flight Efficiency. Alan Core is one of the analysts who travels the country to help pilots check their aircraft. He's also served as the Education Director of the Nebraska Aviation Trades Association and previously worked for Nebraska Extension. We recently met up with Alan near Henderson, Nebraska, where we saw how the process works. Essentially, we have the equipment to uh, test what's coming out of that airplane, uh, where it's landing, uh, the, the volume that's hitting where, uh, actually the, the uniformity of the pattern and the proper pattern width. And why is that beneficial for a pilot? Um, it, it's got a lot of benefits to it. Uh, number one, knowing the, the proper swath width to fly uh, so you're not overlapping too much and so you're not leaving skips in the field is certainly beneficial. Um, if you are flying too narrow of a path, uh, you know, it might look okay in the field, you might not have any yield loss from, from any of that, uh, but at the same time it's more efficient to take the most uh, efficient, widest uh, swath width that you can within reason to uh, make that flight more efficient. So describe the testing that you did today. Uh, testing that we did uh, today and testing that we do uh, all of the time, uh, we put out a string um, and we put uh, a fluorescent dye a rotamine type dye in the uh, aircraft hopper, uh, add water, uh, we've got tripods at both ends uh, and we'll make several passes with that aircraft uh, each time rolling up the string. Uh, as he applies that fluorescent dye uh, it will land on that string. Um, we also uh, put out droplet cards that uh, measure the uh, droplet size, actually the volumine diameter uh, we're looking for uh, fine droplets also. Uh, a large number of, of uh, fine droplets uh, could uh, indicate that there could be a potential drift problem. Um, even though there's always potential drift problems, uh, as you have more and more fine droplets, uh, there's uh, a, a increased potential for drift. When you put that into your computer then, what does it show you? Uh, actually, we read it through a, a spectrometer um, and the actual pattern data that comes out it will come close to pretty much showing you exactly where every drop hit uh, within that pattern. Uh, from, from one end of the pattern, one side of the pattern, to the other side of the pattern. And what we look for is, number one, uh, a uh, consistent low area uh, or, or high spot where there's under application or over application going on uh, within that pattern itself. Now, every pass is going to be a little bit different because of all the different variables that there are uh, in, in aerial spraying. Uh, however, if we consistently see a low spot, a high spot, or some issue, uh, that means that we need to make some adjustments to that equipment uh, to fill in those spots or to uh, reduce those high spots and make it a much more even pattern. For a, a farmer out there, can you explain maybe the bigger differences between a land application and an aerial application? Well, uh, an aerial application obviously is uh, uh, much quicker operation. Uh, aerial application, they can uh, work when ground application sometimes can't. Other issues might be, you know, crop height, obviously. Ground uh, application is going to be, uh, you know, a little less expensive. Uh, however, when, uh, and I see it all the time driving down the highway where they use uh, ground application on, on uh, crops that have been drilled, uh, you obviously have a yield loss there, and that yield loss uh, uh, most likely would more than pay for the application and the product by doing it uh, with aerial sprayer. So what's the participation level in Operation Safe? Well, within the United States, uh, they, they do have a fair participation rate. Um, I've, I've been to a lot of other states as far as uh, uh, helping out with fly-ins and conduct, conducting fly-ins there. Some states, it's a requirement. Uh, people go have their plane tested, uh, just do a set of uh, three or four passes uh, just to satisfy that requirement. Uh, others obviously go there and, and are totally interested in, in, um, in how their plane is, is performing or how their application is. Uh, here in Nebraska, we have a tremendous uh, participation. Uh, the Nebraska Aviation Trades Association has uh, uh, been instrumental in, in the past in, in trying to get uh, members there. 
years ago, 10, 15 years ago, didn't have uh, much of a participation rate. Uh, BASF uh, stepped in and, and offered to help out with this by conducting private uh, clinics like we just did here today. Uh, John Gar with Garco Products also donates the dye. Uh, so there's, uh, it, it's virtually other than their time, their fuel, uh, and that virtually free to the uh, applicators in Nebraska and most take advantage of it. And, and the applicators here, they're more, they, they take a big interest in uh, trying new things. Uh, if, if they want to take a narrower swath uh, to lessen that uh, chance of any drift if they're doing hooverside work and they want to try shutting off some outer nozzles. Uh, they want to try different deflections or they want to try different products, uh, deposition needs. Uh, we spend a lot of time doing that with these guys and they're, they're uh, uh, for example, I'll be at uh, this place at uh, maybe three or four times in one year. Uh, so again, in Nebraska, they're, they're uh, avid about uh, uh, doing the proper job uh, for the producer and protecting the environment.